I got a I got a, a an ask from uh, actually the show is sponsored. It's sponsored by Matt. I'm not going to give his whole name because I don't know if he wants me to. I think he's here on live, and this is the this is kind of the topic as he defined it. He said it would be great to do a show or maybe several shows to take a hard look at what constitutes good objective scientific studies, how to evaluate various claims about scientific questions like COVID-19 and masks and treatments and such. An ideal preferred approach would be a combination of lecture discussion about this topic combined with a concrete analysis of a study or two relating to, for example, COVID-19 and mask efficiency or quality of COVID-19 vaccines. Um, so that's a big ask, uh, particularly if we're going to go through actual articles. And, and uh, I have posted the articles that I think Amos is going to be talking about uh, on the show. I've posted it in the comment section uh, below, so you can open them up uh, and look at them. And I don't know how much in depth we're going to get into these. But uh, it seemed to me that Amos was the ideal person to talk about this. Um, I have done a little bit of stuff on my show about just statistics, which I know a little bit about and how particularly doctors <laughs> have used statistics in bad ways, partially because they're not trained in them and partially because I think they have other agendas going on. But statistics is hard, but you know, so part of the analysis of any paper, any study in, in the world in which we live in is, has to be, are they using the statistics right? Um, and I've done a little bit of work on that, but I think, but what I wanna do today is take an issue where Amos is actually, I think we can say ch you changed your mind about, like yeah, I would say that I revised my I revised my position. I, I think that from the beginning, yes, I can explain that whole evolution in my thinking. Yeah, so let's do that. Why don't we explain that and use the studies, these three papers that we've got? Um, mm -hmm. I, I assume they have uh, they are here because they had some causal relationship to you changing your mind. You, you know, well, you well, I think they they over they kind of summarize some of they, they, there's a lot of the background to what happened. So just so I'm going to start. I'll just start going. So let's. And so let's so talk about so let's talk about masks. So from the very beginning, everybody has said if you're symptomatic, meaning if you've got cough, fever, sneezing, sore throat, you should be wearing a mask if you have to be around people. That's always been the case for symptomatic people. The question with masks came about: Do you need to wear a mask if you're an asymptomatic individual, somebody with no symptoms at all? And initially, the recommendation of not just me but of basically everybody was no, and that was because we did not ever we had not seen asymptomatic transmission of coronaviruses. And remember, this is the seventh human coronavirus that's discovered, and four of them caused 25% of our common colds. We had always seen people transmitting when they were symptomatic, and that's an easy way to then you say if you're symptomatic, you wear a mask. If you're not, don't because you can't transmit. And and that's the, that's the case for Ebola. So take Ebola for example. You cannot transmit if you don't have symptoms of Ebola. That's really so. So that's something we all thought based on what we had seen. The context was all these other coronaviruses, and that's why that recommendation came. Early on, you started to see some anecdotal reports coming from China about maybe this person was asymptomatic, but there was always some flaw. Well, maybe that person was that, that the the case in Germany was taking Tylenol because she thought she was jet lagged. I'm like, well, that's not really asymptomatic. It probably wasn't jet lag. It was probably COVID. Or they were in the same place and they might have they might have touched a contaminated object like a pen. So there was all these ways to kind of discount that. But over time, it became clear that asymptomatic transmission or pre-symptomatic transmission was occurring. And if that was the case, that meant that, and we're in a situation where you have no way to know whether you're infected or not, because you couldn't test yourself. You can't test yourself and brush your teeth. And we also figured out that people with mild symptoms had no idea that the symptoms were from COVID. They thought, you know, there were patients that people that I had talked to said, well, I was at the gym yesterday and I lifted a lot of weights. And that's why I thought my muscles were achy, but it was COVID. So then it became a public policy issue. You know, what do you do with all these asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic, and people who have symptoms that they don't realize are COVID? And that's where the mass, that's how that mass recommendation changed. So we didn't have that evidence back in January, February. We had not, never established pre-symptomatic spread. If you look back at all the interviews I did, or Dr. Fauci, or whoever it might've been, or even look in textbooks about coronaviruses, it was not there. The context of knowledge changed. And I think that's an important thing is that it was contextually right what we said. We would have been, I would have been arbitrary if I would have said to wear masks back then. But when the evidence changed, I had to change my position because knowledge is contextual and the context changed. And I think that's what people say that we flip-flopped or that Dr. Fauci lied. It's not true. It's it's basically the context changed. And you read that section in OPAR about blood about blood types. It's very similar to what happened here. And what so we've seen- Let me just ask, in, in, in terms of symptomatic people, so people with symptoms, 
was it well established? Has it been well established for a long time that symptomatic people, if they wear masks, are less likely to infect others? Yes, because there's a so I see people making claims that no masks don't help and so on. Well, so if you're symptomatic, I mean that's that's a no-brainer basically because it's it's a physical barrier. That's that that's it stops respiratory droplets. It, yeah, I've heard people say uh, things like uh, the virus is too small to be stopped. The virus isn't naked. It doesn't come through those. It's in a respiratory droplet. Just just sneeze on your computer screen right now, everybody watching, and see what you see. That's where the virus is. Uh, it's in those big droplets. That's what we're talking about. There are certain certain pathogens like tuberculosis that, that are in very small. They get suspended in the air, and you need a special kind of mask for that. But for these types of respiratory viruses, the primary transmission is large respiratory droplets that you can see. They fall to the ground under the action of gravity in about six feet or so. So, so it's a, a barrier that stops the kind of droplets that we get when we sneeze is going to stop at least a significant percentage, an overwhelming percentage of the virus is getting out there into the air. Yes, they're not ironclad. There's going to be, and it's not a substitute for, you shouldn't get a false sense of security that you're wearing a mask that you can go into a mosh pit at a, at a punk rock concert uh, during COVID. So just, but so, so that changed. And then at the same time, you know, in some of these studies that I, that you have in, the, in, in there, I think are, are useful. So if you look at the, the one, there was, both Goldman Sachs and and um, the one in health affairs, they both what they did. Now this is an important way to think about. It. So so you, it's just not so. There's lots of studies that came out. You know, places that had mass mandates, cases went down. But you just can't say that because other things were going on at that time. It was not just mask mandates. It was stay at home orders. It was restaurants closed. It was schools closed. It was everybody teleworking. So you've got to control for that. So that's an important point of when you're looking at a scientific paper is are they controlling for all of these other variables so that the only thing different is the mask mandate? Then it's even more than that. You have to also know, you know, were cases going down before the mask mandate? And then all of a sudden the mask mandate come and they went down. They had to, you have to control for that as well. So you have to control for the time to see when the event occurred and where it was in relation to the trajectory of cases. Where, so you have to look back and say, five days before the mask mandate, cases were doing this, they were going at this rate, and now they're at this rate. All of that was, was, um, what was important to figure out what was going on in these studies. And that's how you evaluate a study. It's not an anecdote and it has a lot, there's a lot of statistics and, and most, you're right, m many physicians don't know that much about statistics, but if you're in academic medicine or if you're in epidemiology or in public health, statistics are, are kind of the bane of your existence. You have to get very good at understanding it because you can manipulate, data can look completely two different ways if you, if you don't understand what statistical tests were done. So that's what happened. We had this biological knowledge, new knowledge about coronavirus. Then at the same time, we saw mask wearing go up and in, in, in places where it went up, where cases were going up, they went down or where no in compared to places where they had all the other restrictions except for masks. That, then it was really clear that this was happening and, and that's why the position changed. So, so yeah, yeah I, I read the health affairs uh, article. I, yeah, I was interested in it because it, it does what's called an event study, which is a, a, a particular way of doing statistics about these exactly kind of things. When, when something changes, uh, what impact does it have? That, that's an event study. And I used to do event studies in finance all the time. So uh, uh, actually my dissertation is one big event study. So I found it interesting. So I went to the appendix and looked at the stats and looked at looked at how they they composed it, and they do a good job. I mean, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a good study, in that sense. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this. 
Uh, and, and you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.